Mellow greetings, Tubians, Ron and T here, and let's fanfic Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral Town. Autumn 29, Year 1, Thursday. Sunny. It was a big harvest day today, Journal. I ain't big. I feel like everything came up. Probably because it's the end of the season, we've only got a couple of days left of autumn, and everything is just bursting with its final fruit. It took a lot of effort, and... I'm tired. I'm sore. It'll be worth it. Now, now I definitely know that I have enough food to get through winter and... Well, that's a positive. You know, I'm, I'm not going to starve in the freezing months when I can't grow anything fresh. I've, I've got preserves, I've got plenty of recipes to use them with. I'm, I'm as prepped and ready to go as I can be. Which is what I was aiming for, really, in a lot of ways. This is a good thing. I should be happy. And I am happy. I'm also just really tired and, well, really, really tired. I got through about half the harvest and decided I should go social butterfly for a while. Oh, yeah, of course. I didn't say it. I shouldn't have to say it by now because it's in every entry I write. But I did tend the animals. They're, they're all looking good. Eggs are laid. Sheep and cows are brushed. Uh, so yeah, I got about halfway through the harvest and I decided to take a break and do some socialing. My first stop was Per Poultry Farm, which is when I ran into a bit of a discussion that Rick and Popery and Lilia were having about what it must be like to run a farm all by themselves and they seem a little shocked and embarrassed to realise that I'd noticed it. Rick very boldly advised me that, that they'd just been talking about me and I'll give him points for that. The guy doesn't have a lot of tact? No, tact is the wrong word here. Shame? He's quite happy to acknowledge what he was doing and yeah. Then he decided to quiz me on how much I knew about chickens. And at this point, that's just insulting. I realise he's been raising chooks his entire life, and I've only been doing it for like two and a half seasons. There is a variance here. But how long does it take a chicken to hatch? I could have answered that question three seasons ago. It... it, it, it I could have answered that question by reading a book. How does that tell him what sort of farmer I am? How does that tell him anything about my work ethic, my practices, how I deal with my crops, how I actually take care of the chooks in my care? And, and I sell them back through Lilia. He sees the shape that they're in. He knows that I know how to take good care of an animal. And frankly, look. The man's adorable. He's got that little grin, he's got those sweet eyes, there's, there's something about him that just makes me want to smile, but then he goes and he asks a question like that. Or he tells me about how much he hates Kai, because how dare Kai be footloose and fancy free, and I know that he's got issues with his dad and with his mum being sick and trying to take care of the farm and his little sister and feeling like the whole world is on his shoulders, but you don't speak down to people like that. You, you just, you just, you don't. It, it doesn't matter how wise you are or how much you know or the experience you have. Yeah, he's been doing it longer, but I'm a farmer and I will argue that my farm is more diverse than his. I don't just raise chickens. Admittedly, not that it's he, they think they also have rabbits, but I raise chickens, I raise cows, well a cow, I raise sheep, I raise crops, I'm working to upgrade everything on my own, I'm doing this all by myself, I don't have a family here to support me, I, yes my mother isn't sick but she's just as distant, uh, uh, I'm frustrated and annoyed and crossing him off my list not gonna happen. He could turn out to be 
the sweetest guy behind all of that. And this moment will always be there in the back of my head every time I speak to him from now on. You don't do that. He may have thought that he was coming from some place of knowledge or from maybe that he was being nice. He, he may have thought that, that he was being kind and sweet and asking me about this or that you know, I'd appreciate a chance to chat with a fellow farmer and I would. I would love to be able to sit down and chin wag and you know, shoot the breeze about the best ways to take care of chickens or how to, to increase their health or, or how, how to make them stronger or, or you know, how to get my crops to grow better, faster, stronger, juicier, fresher, whatever. It would be really nice to have someone I could talk through all of that with. Someone who didn't just smile and nod and say, well, yes, yes, that's nice, dear. Which is what I feel like most of the people around here would do because their jobs don't involve farming, except maybe peripherally. And Zach does the whole shipping thing. He probably understands the crop flows a bit. Jeff and Juan sell seeds, so they understand the value of, of getting good quality seeds and moving them out before they get old and all of that sort of stuff. Sure, but... Rick and Popery are the only people around here my age who actually live on a farm, who actually do farm work. It would be so nice just to be able to shoot the breeze. But I can't do that now. Because every time he opens his mouth, I'm going to hear that smarmy little note in his voice. And how long does it take a chicken to hatch? And I'm going to want to slap him with something. I was so cranky throughout the rest of the day. I got the harvesting done, I did the foraging, I made my offering, I chopped up some wood, but I just can't let this go, Journal. It, it's it's not letting me go, would maybe be the, the better way to say it. And Maybe I'm misreading his intentions. Maybe he is a super, super, duper sweet guy, and Karen's right, and... I just, right now, I can't see it. Right now, no. And that upsets me. And it makes me angry. <sighs> the rest of the day was fairly ordinary, tiring, lots of hard work, the usual, but Maybe I should write to Dad. He doesn't really get the whole farming thing, and it, at least Grandpa Caraman would have told him some stuff, right? Maybe he understands more than I think. Anyway, I'd, I'd better get to bed. It's late. and Oh, there probably won't be as much harvesting to do tomorrow, but there'll be a bit. There's always a bit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna hit the hay. Sunny tomorrow. Good night, Journal. Dear Dad, I do wish you were here to give us some advice about how to improve the business. Don't get me wrong, we're keeping it going okay, but I'd like to see it grow a bit more before you get back. Hmm. In saying that, I guess it would be kind of hard to do if you were here. But, I'm not going to complain if you come home early. I tried asking Karen what she reckoned, and she had a great idea of getting a guy who's always in the church to help me take care of the animals. She always has great ideas. And yes, that is the main reason I asked her first, Dad. It's not like anything weird's going on. It just seems like her idea came a little late, though. I couldn't find him for a week, and... Next thing I heard, he was working for Duke and Mana at the vineyard. I'll have to make do with Popery's help for now, I guess. She can't lift as much as you could. But the chickens love her more than anyone in town. <laughs> and when you're the poultry farmer, that counts for a lot. I was asking Mum if she had any idea of who I could talk to about growing the farm. She had some pretty good ideas. She suggested I get in touch with local farmers and ask a few questions. 
maybe I'd get a few ideas of how they manage their farms and work out how to be a bit more efficient. I think I've still got the sign-up sheet from the clash a few weeks ago, so it should be pretty easy to track them down. I'm sure if I do a bit of a survey, we'll get some answers right away. The tricky part is working out who to ask first. Me, Mom, and Popery talked it over. The answer we worked out is to look at the biggest farm run by the fewest people. Like you'd know, there are a lot of people who do a bit of farming. Half the people that join the class just put their pet in, so they're out. A bunch of the folks are they're too far out of town, so they're not much point in asking. There are a few people in town who fit the bill. So we were throwing up some names around the kitchen table, and one of them just happened to come in while we were talking. Brenna's the perfect choice, too. She runs all the Highlands farm by herself and hasn't got anyone in to help her out. You just know to keep that whole place running, she must have some ideas on how to make things move efficiently. And her work ethic is probably better than mine. Or yours, Dad. With all the work you're putting into making sure Mum's healthy again soon. We started talking about how much she'd have to know about chickens and mice just picking her brain sometime. She seems down with the idea. I think you'd like her. I hope you get to meet her soon. Anyway, I'd better get going. She hasn't given me any tips yet, and, and there's so much to do to keep this place running. Your son, Rick. Autumn 30, Year 1, Friday. Sunny. Happy Pumpkin Jamboree, Journal. We have a different name for this in the city, but you know, it's basically the same thing. All the kids go around the neighbourhood and collect sweets, because... You should totally be giving kids more sugar. And I guess out here, it's a little bit different. There's a lot more running around and jumping and all of that sort of exciting and fun stuff. But it's uh, still always struck me as a bit of an odd one, I'll be 100% honest. Uh, the kids showed up one by one. I gave them baked yams and I think I gave out some popcorn, maybe, some chocolate. It was nice to see all the smiling little faces as I gave them their presents. Fresh cooked. May was really happy. S you was a little bit demanding. Popery showed up. I thought that was weird. Uh, I figured she'd be a little bit old for this sort of thing, but she's got a valid point when she says, Why pass up on free sweets? It's the last day of autumn today, so I spent most of my time getting everything ready for the inevitable inevitability of winter. As of tomorrow, I'll have no crops to grow. I'll be relying on my animal produce and whatever else I can find. My first winter as a farmer. On one hand, I'm really looking forward to it, because it might be a chance to take it easy, get some tool upgrades done that I, I struggle to do during the rest of the season, you know, as I need to use them. I, I can maybe go check out the mines a bit, delve a bit deeper... Spend some time being a social butterfly. Just just chill a bit, you know? On the other hand, I'm quite trepidatious. And I'm sure I've got enough food put aside. I'm sure I have enough fodder and chicken feed and and that put aside for, for the season. And I should be 100% fine in, in that respect. I, I did decide not to bother watering anything today. Uh, there's no real point. Nothing's going to sprout. <laughs> It's kind of amazingly magical just how crops stop the day the season turns. And we'll have a few more days, maybe, where it's still comfy enough to, to walk around in shirt sleeves. Maybe. Probably not. Very likely not, no. That's not how these things work. And... Yeah, right, so I, I cleared what crops there were still up. I, I just, 
I chopped everything down. I did my foraging. I went and made offering. Um, I ended up clearing up the last of that fodder that had been growing in the corner of the farm. Um, got all of that in the bins. Made sure I'd insulated everything as well as I could. Basically, today was just about preparing for the inevitability of tomorrow. And with my luck, tomorrow it's going to be... Let me check. Oh yeah, hey, tomorrow it's going to snow. Again, there are things about this place that don't entirely make sense. A regular person would not expect snow on the first day of winter. And it's been quite chill today, but it hasn't been icing over, oh dear god, the skies are falling kind of cold. <sighs> Truth is, I'm just worried about this journal, so I'm rambling to reassure myself. I've done everything I can to ensure I'm as prepared as I am. I am certain that I will find something I can do to ensure that I have an ongoing income. Uh, thanks to the Autumn Horse Derby Festival races thing, I do actually have a bit of a nest egg behind me, so I'm in a better place than I was when I first moved here. That, that's 100% for certain, no questions about it. I've got food stocked up, I've got the kitchen. It's going to be fine. It's going to be a fine, happy, relaxing time. Somehow. And I'm kind of looking forward to it. It's been a long time since I last actually saw snow. And with the money I've got backed up and enough fodder and things in the bin, may maybe... Maybe it's time to talk to Mr. Muji about getting Bella pregnant, adding a second cow, maybe even look at buying an alpaca. I saw one at the Fluffy Festival and they were so cute. And I'm sure that, that Mugu and Barbara would like a friend, another friend, and the chooks get to run around with the four of them. It, it's not fair that it's just those two in the big old barn. Yeah, I might look into that. Like I said, it's going to snow lightly tomorrow. Which, at least, is a difference from it being sunny. I really, really hope that this outfit is warm enough to get me through the winter months. I don't really have a lot of heavy clothes. But somehow, I'll get through. You watch, journal. This is going to be awesome. Good night.